Hey, GED students. Um, GED student uh, Crystal had a question about the distance and cost formulas. She said they've been confusing her. And um, I saw that some people on the internet were making it seem for her as if there were different formulas for distance and cost. So there's not different formulas. However, as it turns out, you can use the same formula many different ways. Let me show you what I mean. First of all, if you look at your GED formula sheet, and you should look at your GED formula sheet a lot before you test, get familiar with it. Um, Google it. You can just type in GED formula sheet. It'll be the first thing that comes up in Google and you can print it so you can get used to it. But you'll see that the very last two formulas on the sheet under the category of algebra are the distance formula, which says this. It just says D equals RT. Sometimes I joke around and call this the dirt formula. Um, super famous formula, but what does this mean? Um, a lot of students don't use the formula sheet because they take one look at that, it looks like gibberish to them. But what this says is to find distance. I know it's to find distance because right now the D is um, isolated, it's all by itself. When a letter is all by itself on its side of the equal sign, that's what this particular form formula is currently finding. And then we see this R and this T shoved together. When things are shoved together in math class, that's telling us to multiply. So what this says is to find distance, multiply together the rate and the time. Distance is found by multiplying together rate and time. Okay, so simple concept. Uh, and first of all, let's apply it in a very simple way. Um, you could be asked... How far did a car travel if it moved at a constant rate? Now, you and I know that unless we're using cruise control, our car is not going at a constant rate. The speeds go up and down, and they change all around. But most word problems just assume they're going at a constant rate of 57 miles per hour for a I don't know, two and a half hours, 2.5 hours. Okay, so I just told you to find distance. You multiply together the rate and the time. And indeed, we've been asked to find distance. It says, how far did a car travel? That is distance. And indeed, we do know the rate. The rate is your speed, 57 in this case. So we're going to find distance by substituting 57 for the R. And we know our time. And it's super important that your rate and your time are in the same kind of unit. This is miles per hour, and this is 2.5 hours. So we are good to go. And we'll just go ahead and multiply that out. And I will use my TI-30XS calculator, because if I had this on the GED, although I probably wouldn't, it's a little simpler. Uh, than the GED usually gets. But if I did have this on the GED, I would have my calculator. So it looks like I would go 142.5. And 142.5 what? Miles, because I was tra traveling in miles per hour. Okay, so really, really simple concept that you can just multiply together rate and time to get distance. Now, let's look at, uh, I've told you guys before, I'll tell you lots of times that these formulas, um, Simple formula application problems are usually not what you see in the GED. They usually take it to a slightly higher level of complexity. So let's look at a few more uh, distance problems that get a little more complex. So here's one thing they could do. They could make the rate and the time not agree. Let me show you what I mean. How far did a car travel? Um in 45 minutes if it is moving at a speed of 75 miles per hour. And just in case since I haven't checked my answers, I'll give myself some rounding directions. We'll round to the nearest mile. 
Oh, how about we round to the nearest tenth of a mile? A little more challenging. Okay. So, how far? Again, they've asked me how far. They're asking me to find distance. Uh, how far did a car travel in 45 minutes? So, once again, they've given me time. If it is moving at a speed of 75 miles per hour. So, that's a speed. So, that's my rate. So it looks like a really straightforward problem. Most students go, okay, distance equals rate times time. And they plug in the two numbers. They go, hey, uh, the rate is 75 and the time is 45. And then they get this problem wrong. Why are they getting this problem wrong? Well, this is 75 miles per hour. But this isn't the number of hours. <laughs> this time that I have is in minutes. My rate doesn't agree with my time, and so this problem won't work. I either have to figure out how many miles they would go in a minute, uh, or I have to turn that 45 minutes into an hour, and I think that's the way to go. That's what I'll do. Now, you guys say, Kate, 45 minutes is uh, less than an hour, and I would agree with you. 45 minutes is less than an hour, but it's a part of an hour. What kind of numbers do we use when we have pieces and parts, usually fractions? And I know you're going, Kate, I freaking hate fractions. You don't need to do the math with fractions. Your TI will do it for you. You just need to be able to understand that 45 minutes is a part of an hour because it's 45 out of how many minutes are there in an hour? 60. I have 45 minutes out of 60. I have a fraction of an hour. And I will actually just now do the multiplication that's required here in my TI calculator. And depending on um, how it turns out, um, I might convert my answer, but let's take a look. So I'll do 75 times, and for some of you guys know, Kate, that's three quarters of an hour. You could just use three quarters. So super special for you if you know 45 out of 60 reduces, but if you don't, your calculator will still do the math for you. But I got this stupid answer in my calculator, and all the students moaned, 225 divided by four, oh no, or 225 over 4, sorry. Oh no, what will I do? Well, they gave you your problem in a fraction answer. So you're going to have to convert it to a decimal. Now, you can do this because you know it. You could literally go 225 divided by 4 in your calculator and see what it comes to. Or you can just press the convert button in your calculator. There is a button that converts fractions to decimals and decimals to fractions in your calculator. Um, and so um, I think the way I'll do it with this is with the fraction to decimal button. So that's what I'm going to press. It looks like this. F convert to D. It's um, up at the top right. It's above the table button. And notice that it's in green. Anytime you want something that's in green, you have to press second first. So I'm going to press second. And then that F convert to D button. And it tells me that my distance is actually 56.2. 56.25 what? 56.25 miles. That's how far I would go in 45 minutes if I was going 75 miles per hour. And that makes sense. I would expect it to be less than 75 miles because I'm traveling for less than a full hour. Okay, so this is one way this problem can get more complex. Okay, let's look at the other ways this problem can get more complex. And this is probably, Crystal, what you thought you were uh, when you said that there's more than one formula. There's not more than one formula. However, you can use the same formula to solve for more than one dimension. Let me show you what I mean. So there's my formula, D equals RT. Okay, so imagine John traveled a hundred and twenty miles in 2.5 hours. John, I think, is a speed demon. How fast? Oh, maybe he's not. No, he's not. He's an old man, actually, as it turns out. Was John driving? So I want you to notice that once again in this problem, I see the relationship between distance, rate, and time. So first I see John traveled 120 miles. Well, 120 miles is a distance. That's how far he went. I also see that he traveled in 2.5 hours. 
Uh, and 2.5 hours, well, what do we measure in hours? We measure time, so that's a time. And then it says, how fast was John driving? We're looking for his speed or his rate. So once again, I can bust out that D equals RT formula, but something different's gonna happen this time. Because this time, I'm not actually looking for distance. The distance isn't a mystery. I know the distance. The distance is 120 miles. So this time when I plug into the formula, the 120 is going to be right under the D. I'm substituting out the D for 120. R is the thing I'm looking for. It's an unknown, so it will stay R. And my time is 2.5. Now we've said when two things are shoved together like this, they're multiplying. Now you might say to me, Kate, how in the world am I supposed to multiply together a number and a letter? And all we do algebraically to do that is we write the number first and we write the letter second. There I've multiplied together a number and a letter. And now this formula is interesting because it is not solved for the mystery letter. What do I mean here? Notice this. R is not alone. When we've used this formula before, we had the D alone, and so all we had to do was the little four words math and do the multiplication. But this time the R, the letter that I want to know about, is not alone. And so what I'm going to have to use is I'm going to have to use my solving equations methods. Whenever the letter is not alone, you're going to have to do some work to get the letter alone. And if you need a review on that, you should go watch the Solving One Step Equations video that I've made because uh, I took a good 45 minutes to do that a lot. Uh, but I will tell you here, you always just do the opposite. So the opposite of multiplying uh, by 2.5 is dividing by 2.5. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to divide away the 2.5. Now, the rule of equations, solving equations, is I can do whatever I want as long as I do it to both sides. So I'll jump across the equal sign and divide the other side of the equation by 2.5 as well. And again, that only works when I have an equal sign. So on this left-hand side here, and it might do you good to like put a um, piece of paper right here, block off the right-hand side so you're only looking at the left-hand side. On this left-hand side, I have 120 divided by 2.5. That's the math that I will uh, do here. So 120 divided by 2.5 is 48. I get 48 here. And that's equal to, well, let's see, multiplying by 2.5 and dividing by 2.5 cancel. The only thing I see left on my right-hand side is an R, so that R will drop. And I find out that my rate here is 48. 48 what? Well, I just took miles and divided by hours. So that'll be 48 miles per hour. Uh, and that is the rate, and John is driving like an old man. You guys are probably all passing him on the left. So that's what we mean by it, the people who were showing you more than one formula were just moving the formula around, moving the same formula uh, and solving for different letters, okay? But you don't have to memorize three formulas. You can just use start with the D equals RT, solve when you need to s solve, simplify when you need to simplify. So um, I'll do uh, one more that's uh, like this for the unit cost formula. So let's say... A case of, um, what shall we buy? My goodness, my mind has gone blank. Sorry. A case of eggs cost um, 56.32 and contains uh, 40 dozen eggs. How much does each uh, dozen cost? Okay. So once again, I have this formula here, um, or I have a problem that I could use a, a formula for is what I mean. What I see here is that I have a case of eggs costing $56.32. This is the cost for the entire case, everything I'm buying. So this is definitely total cost. And I can see that that case of eggs uh, contains 40 dozen eggs. So this is my number of units, how many things I'm buying. 
Now it says, how much does each dozen cost? How much does each dozen cost? I'm looking for the cost of one of the units. We call that a unit cost. One of the dozens in this case, our unit here is a dozen. Okay, so we can bust out the total cost formula. Now something weird happens on the GED formula sheet with the total cost formula. I have no idea why they do that. this with this formula, they don't do it with any other one. Every other one they use letters and on this one they use words which is stupid and confusing, but that's okay. Maybe they don't know that you'll know what the letters mean, so they wanted to spell it out. So I'll just, um, I'm too lazy to write out this whole formula. I have to tell you the truth. This is what the formula sheet says. Total cost is equal to number of units times price per unit. Oh my gosh. If it were me writing it, I would write a C for total cost because I know what I mean when I write C, I mean the total cost. And I'd probably write an N for number of units, I might even write a U, and then I might write a P for price per unit. Uh, so this says the same thing as that, I'm just too lazy to spell, okay? So I'm saying to find the total cost, multiply together the number of units and the price. Now again, this formula is currently solved for C, but we can use it to solve for C, N, or P, because we are brilliant mathematicians who know how to manipulate a problem for what we need. So let's go ahead and put in what we know. The first thing you do with a formula is always put in the known values. Well, the first thing we figured out was that total cost, 5632. Since that's the total cost, I'll put it under big C, 5632. And that's equal to, we also know the N, we know the number of units. We said we we're gonna buy 40. Uh, dozen eggs, or that case had 40 dozen eggs. But what we don't know, the mystery is the P, the price per unit. And so now, once again, you can see that I have my numbers in place, but can you see that my letter is not alone? It's not alone on its side of the equal sign, which means I need to solve. I need to use my one-step algebra uh, equation skills in order to solve this sucker. Currently the 40 and the P are shoved together multiplying. When you solve you always do the opposite. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to divide that 40 away. The opposite of multiply is divide. I'll do that on both sides. Okay. Okay, and now I'm going to write the new equation. What my equation looks like after I make that change to both sides of it. So 56 Point thirty-two divided by 40, I'm just reading that left-hand side. That's exactly what it says. It says 56.32 divided by 40. So um, that comes to 1.408, and that's equal to, on this side, multiplying by 40 and dividing by 40 cancel. So there's my P. So my price per unit is uh, 1.408. Now, uh, this problem is done algebraically, but we have something you should notice here. This is 1.408 what? Well, we're talking about a price per unit. What do we measure price in? Dollars. This is dollars per dozen of eggs. And I hope that you can see that 1.408 is not the way we usually talk about dollars. And dollars usually, except when you're at the gas station, only have two decimal places. So I want to round this to the hundredths place or to the nearest cent is another way of thinking of this. So I'm gonna cut off and throw away this eight, but before it dies, I have to ask myself, is it big enough to matter? Am I halfway through my digit system yet? Well, eight is, um, you know, more than halfway through, More, it's past the five point and so, I'm closer to $1.41 than I am to $1.40, so I'll round up my zero to a one. Still throwing away my eight, and it looks like it's about a buck forty-one per dozen eggs. And so again, there's not more than one formula. It's just that you can use the formula to work forwards, multiplying to find total cost or to find distance, or you can use it to work backwards and let the algebra guide you to solve uh, for other variables. All right, hope this makes sense to you. If you have any questions about this or any other GED topic, be sure to drop it in the comments and I'll do my best to answer it.